Accessibility and WCHD. Practice a lot about that great IT here. Um, my name is Rolf Meyer. I uh, work as an accessibility consultant for uh, uh, WCHD.nl. Uh, before that, I worked for Dead Jumping Project uh, for about 10 years and I worked for Drupal for 15 years. You can reach me at Mastodon or LinkedIn. Um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, I'm going to introduce uh, um, my, uh, our company a little bit, uh, then what is accessibility, and then we see how Drupal is uh, compliant to those um, um, criteria. First of all, WCHD.nl, your website accessible to everyone. This is uh, since I work here since uh, April 1st this year, so that's uh, not too long, uh, and it's the um, I now um, do not work with Drupal anymore, which I did for 15 years. So uh, what we do is we uh, uh, perform auditing and reporting on accessibility. So um, uh, mainly government sites, um, they need a report. Um, 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 on accessibility. Okay, we also advise the client, uh, maybe it's best to uh, build a new site, maybe it's uh, better to enhance it. Uh, we also train developers and editors, so um, uh, we also have the largest European knowledge base, which is uh and we work with a company called Web Alley, and they made um, for WordPress, they made an accessibility WordPress plugin and this helps the editor to add um, content in an accessible way. I'll come to that later a little bit. Um, and we also work with PDF Estelle because besides HTML, uh, accessibility is also necessary for uh, office um, uh, files like PDFs. And this is a, a kind of specialist work. So. What is accessibility? Um, accessibility means that websites and web applications can be used by all visitors. So it's not only for elderly or disabled visitors, which uh, uh, some people might think. It's for everybody. This is a very nice uh, image from uh, Microsoft that I like because here you can see, for instance, if you have a uh, hearing problem, you could be completely deaf, but it could also be that you have an ear infection and you, um, uh, you're, um, uh, you don't uh, hear good for, let's say, a couple of days or a couple of weeks maybe, or you um, uh, are in a loud environment and in that situation um, you cannot hear anything properly. So. If you have a proper site uh, with good accessibility, then everyone is, uh, uh, is good for everyone. Uh, also, if you do not really have a uh, disability, like the bartender in this case. And also, um, for instance, if you're blind, you do not see anything at all, but it's uh, gradually, I mean, uh, you could also uh, maybe see 50% or maybe you wear glasses and in the morning you want to read your uh, uh, news site, forgot to put on your glasses and then uh, you should be happy that the fonts are big enough and have enough contrast. So it's for everybody, uh, not just for uh, people with disabilities. Um, some random facts, WCHG, it stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Um, so if you need an accessibility report in the European Union that's based mainly on the WCHG standard from uh, W3.org uh, we're now at version 2.1 and you need level AA there are three levels um, but we need level AA uh, HTML itself is usable and accessible so Use appropriate HTML, it's kind of rule number one to make an accessible site. Uh, you could use, you could add area attributes 
uh, accessible, rich internet applications. So this is for edge cases and for custom elements, you know, think React applications or uh, techniques like that. Um, but it sometimes helps with regular HTML as well. Um, but be careful with it, because you can also screw things really up. Um, so if you're not sure, don't use area. Only use it if, you're, uh, if you know what you're doing. Um, accessibility um, is also related to SEO. Uh, think of Google and other search engines as your first blind user. And uh, the better your accessibility is, the better also those search engines can understand what is uh, the meaning of your uh, pages, your website. Uh, this is also this also relates to speed. Uh, if you optimize your images, it goes both, way, both ways. If you optimize your HTML, your site will be faster. And the other way around, if you optimize, let's say, your images, um, they, they load faster, then that is uh, in itself um, good for your accessibil uh, accessibility. And, and this is also uh, this also relates to uh, climate things like uh, if you optimize your images you need less bandwidth and energy. So it's all intertwined. Uh, some resources, uh, well the main one is w3.org uh, slash y which stands for Web Accessibility Initiative. Um, we have a, a small knowledge base at uh, wchg.nl uh, it's op free and open. Uh, we also have a subscription-based one, uh, wkkennisbank.nl, um, and my colleague, our main author, uh, Nick Derksen, he uh, has his own site with, uh, on which he shares a lot of tips and tricks and techniques uh, regarding uh, WCHG and uh, accessibility in general. Why is it important? Well. For me, the main reason is that more people uh, can be independent and uh, autonomous on the web. So, um, for instance, there was this discussion on uh, new.nl. There was a news item about making websites for hospitals uh, more accessible. They were really bad at it, which is, I think, kind of weird for a hospital. But uh, there was a lot of discussion like, uh, oh, but that's expensive and that's, uh, you know, especially because it's community money, uh, you know, let them ask other, other people to help them. Well, I think that's a bit of a weird argument. Um, a hospital has a ramp for wheelchairs, it has elevators. We do not accept that uh, those people have to ask other people to let them climb the stairs. So why do we ask that in a digital environment? We shouldn't, I think. There's also a more practical reason. Because if you can target this, uh, this, this large group of uh, visitors, you have more visitors. If you optimize your flows uh, and make them more accessible, you will have higher conversion. And which uh, company doesn't want that? Because that leads to more profit, obviously. Um, Sometimes um, an organization is more, um, let's say, sensitive to the first argument, but other ones more to the second. So I switch them around uh, whenever that's appropriate. Um, so more visitors, how much more are we talking about? Um, that's about 20% that a lot of sites just flush down the toilet. That's really a lot, I think. I mean, I worked for Booking.com. We were very, we were, uh, 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 very pleased if we could target a specific browser which meant half a percentage of more visitors. And now we're talking about 20. I cannot stress this enough how much this is, so I won't. <laughs> One in five. Okay, uh, there's also the legislation. Uh, since 2018, 
government and semi-government sites uh, <coughs> should comply to the WCHG. Um, but from about a year on from now, uh, also uh, other companies should comply. Uh, so think of e-commerce or publishers. And the uh, demands are that you have to have a minimum of 10 staff members uh, and or a minimum of 2 million euros in revenues. So that's quite a lot, I think. Um, and from 2026, maybe, it's not sh sure exactly when that will be, there will be a supervisory body. So you could even be fined by then. It's the same like the cookie law. Um, probably around that time, a lot of uh, companies will say, hey, I didn't know that. So it's suddenly there. But, well, it's not suddenly, actually. So be prepared. Um, OK. So this is a bit about uh, accessibility in general. Uh, how is Drupal doing? Um, the current stage, um, Drupal has a specific page on accessibility uh, and it states that it is committed to W3C's Web Accessibility Initiative. So it's striving to attain uh, WCHG 2.1 AA. Um, so it's not there yet and it's, it, it can be hard for, for uh, Drupal to uh, comply completely. Um, Drupal already added support for the authoring tool uh, accessibility guidelines. Let's say that's the admin interface. Uh, I'm not going into details uh, about that here, but um, um, that's, that's nice that they support that already. Of course, theming is your most powerful layer, but it can be hard to override all your templates. So it's nice if Drupal um, has a good uh, default. Contract modules do not have to commit themselves, so your mileage may vary. Uh, pick your contract modules um, carefully. Um, another nice thing is in the issue queue, uh, you can have tags, um, and um, they can have the accessibility tag or the WCAG tag, and even with a specific guideline. So then it's WCAG 412, for example, which is about role. Uh, uh, names and values. So, um, how does Drupal um, do uh, default uh, headings? Uh, the rules are that you only have one H1, uh, that, you, that you should never skip a level, and that your page should start with an H1. There's always the problem with blocks, navigation in the header. Uh, those should have a heading 2, which is an H2. So the H1 is not the first heading on the page. Well, actually it is, the H1 should be the first heading of the content. So it's not really a problem if your blocks in the header, in an aside, uh, have an H2. Uh, Drupal does this uh, uh, good. Um, the no title is always an H1, your fuse title is an H1. If you have a CK editor uh, in Drupal core, you cannot choose the H1 as a heading, so uh, you're uh, forced to start with an H2. So that's nice, that's good. Um, and to show you uh, what this does for someone using, for instance, VoiceOver, if you have the opportunity to check out VoiceOver, uh, please do so, because it's, it's really enlightening on how, uh, for a sighted user like me, on how uh, you uh, navigate uh, and, and check a page. Um, just like a sighted user scans the page, is this interesting or not? If not, whoop, move along, maybe check the links, maybe check the headings. This is exactly the same as a non-sighted user does, or someone who uses voiceover. Um, you can use a, uh, what Apple calls a rotor, uh, this is the headings one, so here you see all the headings used on the page and you can navigate through it with your arrows and then go to that uh, particular section if you want. 
But this is just headings. You can also have an oversight of all links, or maybe all tables, or maybe all forms, or uh, iframes, whatever. So that's why it is important to have this uh, properly coded. Um, yeah, please check it out if you, if you can. So, um, oh, one last uh, thing. There's also the main uh, tag and the side tag and the header tags, which is also the uh, page <coughs> structure. Uh, this is all. This this is all good in Drupal. Um, how about navigation? Navigation, think about menus, the skip link, the breadcrumbs, uh, links in general, of course, in, in, in different states. Uh, and also, make sure you have multiple ways to navigate. So you have a menu, but you also have search, you also have sitemap. Different people will use your site in different ways. Um, what's the basic structure of a menu? Well, you might be familiar with this. There is enough element with an unordered list, list elements with links inside it. So, for instance, uh, we have a home, a product, and a privacy page. And as you see here, the first element, the home page, let's say we are on the home page right now, and that has a area current attribute uh, which says this is the current item we're looking at. Um, then you should add a heading, I already mentioned that, uh, and the NAV should have a label, So this, because that label is in the rotor again, if you navigate um, via your menus. Um, so in this case, the NAV has an area labeled by, which points to the ID of the H2, so the NAV will have the label main menu. So, kind of, this is the kind of ideal situation, then uh, how does Drupal do it? Well, they use enough element, also uh, with an area labeled by uh, attributes, and they also add a role as navigation, that's for backwards compatibility, that's not really necessary anymore. Um, so, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, a problem uh, either. As you can see, there is no area current in space. So that's a shame. Is that really a problem? Well, actually... Oh. Yes. Um, because there is a... Uh, There is an issue about it. Add area content. Oh, still hear me? Ah, okay. Uh, add area current attribute to navigation items. Uh, and as you can see, it is uh, fixed. So in the next release of Drupal version 11, it will add this uh, attribute to uh, menus. It already adds it to pagers. So um, it's just the menus that are um, until now not uh, correct. Um, so, nearly perfect, very nice. Um, next one is tables. Um, most of them are um, from views. So, tables have a, uh, a head, a body, and a foot. Uh, use a caption. If you navigate by tables, then the caption is like the title of your table, so you need that. You could use a summary. And of course, uh, most tables will have header cells, uh, and they will have a scope and a header uh, attribute for the data cells. I will show it. Tables can get very complicated, so there's a lot of information on the w3.org site uh, about call and call group, row span and call span, multiple bodies, you name it. It can get very nasty, um, but sometimes it's necessary. So, uh, this is a simple table. Uh, let's say uh, we have something uh, like, uh, like this. Uh, here we have a songs list um, with a few characteristics from it. Um, it's five by five, uh, headers on top. So, we have, we have columns here with data. Um, what Drupal will do is, uh, well, it's a bit simplified, but it's, it's basically it's this. 
So it adds, you can add a caption, in this case songs, uh, you will have a header with header cells and they have, a, the TH has an ID and a scope, the scope is col, because you have columns, you can also have rows of course. Um, and then in the body section you have rows with data cells and those data cells have a header attribute and they refer to the ID of the header cell. So you will always know wherever you are in the table where the header is. So what the meaning is of this information. Fuse just did very nicely. Um, I couldn't get Fuse to output uh, more complicated tables so I'm not sure about that but I'm not even sure if that is possible with Fuse. So. Um, are there any issues? Uh, the main issue is that they use a link for uh, sorting, uh, especially if it's uh, Ajax, then you should use a button. If you do something on the screen, you're not going anywhere. Um, and it might maybe, uh, um, you might maybe add some area roles, but it's, it's, it's kind of complicated, so uh, maybe leave them out, that's a better option. So tables are quite good. I was, I was really surprised when making this. I didn't know about the call attribute actually and the headers attribute. So um, I learned from it. Very nice. Uh, then we have forms. Um, forms from Drupal Core and web form is based on it. So um, it will have the same issues and the same uh, uh, proper stuff. Um, the main issues are the required marker and also here some area attributes. Uh, it, it could benefit from it, but um, the main thing is the required marker. There is a ticket about it, uh, and it says Drupal should not use full CSS required marker in forms according to WCHD 2.0. So it's already, um, it's already an old uh, ticket. The thing is, you can use a star marker, but then you need an explanation at the beginning of the form. Or you could just explicitly use the name, uh, the, 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 the term required. So what does this ticket uh, do? Uh, we have a simple form here. Let's say we have a contact form. Uh, this is, this is the, 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 from the basic Drupal contact form. Uh, um, it will add a form uh, with a label. Let's say that is um, the subject. The input is a type is text and it's required. Uh, and then there is a submit button, of course. Um, what, it, uh, what this specific uh, issue uh, does is that it adds the uh, word required uh, between brackets in the label. So, the current situation is that if you do not have CSS, you will see that's the uh, upper left image, um, that the username and password will not tell you anything if the, uh, whether the, the, the input is required or not. So after the fix, you get the, the image uh, below that one, then it will say username required, password required, so you know. There's one detail that if uh, uh, Drupal uses Olivero as a standard theme and what it does is that it removes the required uh, uh, term, well it doesn't remove it, it just doesn't display it, and it adds a star marker but not the explanation of it. So what I think would be better and also which is more WCHG compliant is that you just add the word, the term required. That would be my tip to always do this. Uh, I have a question about this. Yeah. Because we just did an audit on one of our websites. Yes. Um, and um, uh, currently we implemented the, the required between brackets. Yeah. But that, um, uh, for instance, when you have a page where you can paste comments, then you have a comment form and you have uh, a your comment here required. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that makes you think that you are required to place a comment. Ah. So it's, that is not always the best no. option. Uh, and also the feedback that we uh, got from the uh, agency that was doing the audit is that um, making visible that a field is required that 
that is not a requirement from the uh, accessibility guidelines. It's more about the validation. So when you submit, yes. that the uh, validation messages need to be very clear about yes. which fields need to be required. So uh, actually, this is not something required within the accessibility guidelines. It's about validation, not about making it uh, visible up front. Yes. Um, you're right about that. There's a, there's a lot of stuff I tell you that is more best practice for accessibility than really required uh, in, in the guidelines. Uh, this is one of them, indeed. Um, <coughs> um, but, yeah, so uh, you're right. Uh, so this is, this is a, a, a general tip, but maybe in a specific situation you should, uh, you should just do it differently, yes. Um, Then uh, images and or media. Um, images um, need an alternative text. Well, that's nothing new, I guess. It depends on what type of image it is, uh, what type of meaning it will convey to what the alt text should be. Uh, so you have five types of images and uh, the w3.org has a decision tree about it. Um, let's see if we can show it. So, <clears throat> if you follow this one with no and yes, you will find what type of image you have and if you need an alternative text or not. Uh, because um, if you have a decorative image, uh, the uh, alternative image should be empty. Now, what is a decorative image? It, it can be hard to decide up front. So, um, also, it still states about a uh, text image. Uh, we can now load fonts. I, I think we shouldn't use those anymore. Um, and it also depends, and this is very... Um, tricky on context. So not every image has the same alternative text in, on different pages, on different, uh, in different content. For instance, this one. This is, um, this is an image of a butterfly uh, on a flower. Uh, what you see a lot of times is that it uh, has the uh, name of the file as a uh, alternative text, dsc underscore 1709.jpg. Well, it says nothing about the image, so that's wrong anyway. Uh, correct would be butterfly on a flower. But if you have a blog about natural areas, for instance, uh, it's better to, uh, to uh, say, for instance, a small firefly has orange wings with black dots and borders and a grey-brown underside. Or you could use the Latin names if that is appropriate for the uh, butterfly and the flower. If you have a news report on the declining butterfly population, you could say uh, the little fire butterfly in hiking area by Sbrook, a rare sighting in 2024. So, it makes it more specific and appropriate for the context the image is in. So, how does um, Drupal add images? Well, we get to content editing, mainly in CK Editor. Uh, of course, you have the specific fields, but it's... Um, <coughs> um, I just uh, uh, have CK Editor here. So adding images, every image is unique, so you can upload an image and say it's decorative or not. This is, this is a standard feature from CK Editor 5, so it, this is standard in Drupal. You can just pull the switch and say it's decorative or not and add an alternative text if that's needed. However, there is a bug. So if you upload an image and then set it to decorative, it will not um, render an alt attribute at all, which is wrong. It should have an alt attribute, but it should be empty. So you should edit, add some alternative text, save your note, edit it again, and then make the switch, and then it will display a, uh, it will add a alt text attribute 
uh, and it will be empty. So that's tricky. There is a ticket about it in the uh, GitHub repository, but it's not very uh, active. Uh, how about media? Because then you have a library, and uh, you can add an alternative text to images, and that will be in the library. So if you use the image again, you will have the same alternative text, so you cannot adjust it for uh, context, but actually you can. So this is also a standard feature from media in uh, CK editor. Um, then you can change the, uh, you can override the alternative text. So it will give you the uh, standard alternative text and you can override it with a specific one. So that's very nice. You cannot leave it empty here if that's needed. There is a module for that so that you can just uh, say, okay, I don't, I, I want it to be empty. Uh, but in core, you have to give a alternative text. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, about some extensions for CK Editor. Um, I would really like to have CK Editor help the editor uh, more uh, while adding content. So. For instance, you could tell the editor that the uh, heading structure is not uh, correct or that maybe an alternative text is missing. Um, there's nothing in CK editor itself apart from um, some minor things, but there, is, uh, there are um, uh, modules that can help you uh, and I think the nicest one is editorially. Uh, there's also web accessibility and the decorative image widget is the one I just talked about, about leaving the uh, alternative text empty. Uh, there might be others. Um, no, I'm going to show you editorially. I really like it. So... My editorially. Ah. ah, here it is. Yes. I need to save it. So. Oh, sorry. Something goes wrong. Ah. Cancel. Sorry about this. So. so. Okay. Life examples are never good. Um, okay, well, sorry, I don't have a live example for this, uh, so you should just believe me. <laughs> um, this is the H1. What I did here is a level uh, three heading, which is not correct. It should be an H2, of course. Uh, editorial will show this, uh, so it will uh, uh, put an orange a question mark here. You can click it and you get extra information about what is wrong, why it's wrong, and maybe how you could fix it. What's happening with my screen? Help! Well, anyways, um, same for the image. So, if the image does not have an alternative text, then it will um, give a comment here. And in the right corner, uh, where I'm standing now, um, there's a small box with more explanation and also an outline. What I like about editorially is that it, it's not only the content it will check, but it will check the complete page. So it will also, uh, you can have an outline of uh, headings and it will say, okay, H1, H3, from the comments, this is an H2. So it will show you not just uh, 
what, what you as an editor added to the site, but the complete page. What is a uh, what is a shame? I think is that uh, it doesn't help the editor while while adding content. That would be nice, I think. Um, so the current state is that you can add um, for CK editor is that you can add images or media. I wouldn't do both, but they are uh, 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 they are both uh, uh, good. Adding one is unavailable, which is nice too. Uh, but that's about it, what you get as assistance for the uh, editor. So, possible developments, well, I talked about uh, AWP before. Um, this is a more, like, you get something like this. Uh, this is Gutenberg, this, it's the standard uh, for, for WordPress. Um, so, for instance, uh, there's an uh, uh, heading level 4, which is not correct because we have an H1, an H2, and then an H4. And then on the right you will see that there is a um, a, a warning uh, about the heading structure. So while editing you will get help on uh, accessibility issues. So personally I'm not really a fan of Gutenberg. There are, there are issues with it. So Maybe it's, you could port it to Gutenberg for Drupal, uh, but maybe it would be better to have an experience like that in CK Editor itself, I think. Uh, hearing the uh, uh, Dries note, it would help Starship. Um, I think it would be a really nice addition. Uh, this one we already had. Um, okay, so that's a bird's eye view on how Drupal does uh, things. Um, where to start? If you want to know how your page does, uh, we have a free web scan for instance, there are more, but uh, at wcat.nl we have a free web scan. It will check for the, some main issues that, are, uh, that can be automatically tested. Uh, a lot of things can't, so it's, it's, it's really uh, small. Uh, there's also an easy checks page. wc.org has a test evaluate page with a lot of information where you can, uh, if you want to start with uh, uh, checking how you, how you do on accessibility, and there's the preliminary, and this will give you a uh, easy check, so uh, if you have a page title, if your uh, image has alternative text, if your heading hierarchy is alright, contrast ratio, things on interaction, general things, uh, for instance your basic structure check. Uh, basic HTML. Um, so this is this is just for a developer to see. Okay, am I doing right? It's it's an easy start. So conclusion already. Uh, Drupal is committed to the way that he says a W3C's web accessibility initiative. Uh, it's not fully compatible with uh, WCAG yet, but it's quite good already. Uh, I can't compare it to other CMSs, but I think there is a um, um, strong point here. Um, for developers, issues are properly tagged, which is very nice, so you can find stuff, you can add stuff, and then um, uh, that's nice. Um, I think it could benefit from more support for the editor itself. Um, that's about it. I have one present for you. Uh, if you subscribe to a uh go to slash Drupal Jam, you will get a 50% discount uh, for a year. So, uh, if you're interested, maybe uh, that's uh, something to consider. Thank you. Are there any questions? I'm not sure how many, how many time we've left for questions. Okay, then uh, we go out to lunch. Uh, I'm here, so if you uh, want to ask something, then just uh, schiet mij aan. Thank you.